We're here doing uh, an interview with the stellar designers from Macage, Alisa and Aaron. What a great show, congratulations. I mean, I don't know anyone who isn't a huge fan of this brand for so many reasons. Not only uh, is it a hip, fabulous brand, you make an incredible product, both in terms of the quality and, and the fashion direction, but uh, you also um, are very true to your signature. You know, you have a, a, a vision, it's very precise, you know who you are. How long did it take to get to that point where you really understood the vision for the brand? Well, I guess uh, I would say as everybody at the beginning when we started at like the age of 19, we were like kind of discovering ourselves and uh, I would say about seven years after we started, we kind of like understood who we were. Well, I, I think that we always had the, the same vision, but I think we just matured and different things became very important to us. Uh, when we started, we were making coats to look good, really. It was the main focus because we looked like Michelin man uh, when we were going out. And we, were, we literally would go out in a leather jacket not to look bad. And at the beginning, the focus was looking good. And in time, it became technicality and uh, warmth also, which is another ball game because it's uh, much harder to make something look amazing and make you feel good and look good. Mm -hmm. So there was just a transition in how the product became more uh, elevated in terms of its, its usage besides for just making you feel mm. and look good. I find it very um, enigmatic that you hail from Israel Yet you have such a profound um, understanding of uh, you know what it takes to really go live through a Canadian winter. Um, although I, I, you spent a few here already, and you are designing for for this market first and foremost, perhaps now happily you're out there internationally. But uh, but where did your early fashion uh, inspirations come from? I mean, growing up, what what was it that that really fed your uh, fantasies as designers to be? Well, Seeing you on the screens interviewing <laughs> every designer. <laughs> oh, 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 I know, I, cr I created a monster here. <laughs> but, but, you know, what was it? Was it did you, you know, have a, a mother that was really stylish? Well, is your family into fashion? I, I guess my grandmother was a, a seamstress, a seamstress, and uh, I guess I know Elisa since like we're 12 years old and we kind of realized that we, we were kind of different than everybody else because we're the only one that used to always get punished by changing our uniforms all the time. <laughs> you know, so we, you know, we always managed to like kind of change them, create our own stuff. So we realized that uh, fashion was something we liked. We liked to, uh, she would like basically put deposit on buying shoes all the time by going to stores. And we realized that fashion was something in us. And uh, during the summers, we used to work in the area in Montreal where it was, it, it's, it was all about fashion. It was all the factories. And uh, we even started a business when we were 16 years old and just patching on clothes and vintage stuff. And then we went into a fashion school and we, we had that love and we knew what we, we wanted to do at an early age, I would say. And then we found ourselves with time, like what we wanted to do, and uh, discovering ourselves, uh, what's our look, uh, what's our goal. And uh, like everybody else, at the beginning, you try a bit of everything, but then you know what's your DNA. Obviously, uh, in order to have achieved the success that you have achieved thus far, you were uh, big dreamers. I mean, you had a big vision in mind in the first place. How, um, how tough has it been to create this powerful brand here in this country? I think that uh, you, it, it becomes hard when you think you made it. I think that uh, continuing to aspire to uh, reach those dreams and always set yourselves bigger goals is what keeps you going. And uh, I think that if you stand still and look at what's happening, you stop evolving. Yeah. So I think that really the idea is to continue to have bigger goals and our dreams just become bigger and bigger and not to say that we're not appreciative of where we are today but I think there's so much more to do and we really want to show the world what Canada is all about and we're going to continue to forge our way 
and, uh, and, and, and make a difference and make something that people notice and recognize, which is what's most important for us. One thing that you started to do not that long ago was open your own stores. You have a fantastic store in Soho in New York, just opened one at the Eaton Center, and happily here at uh, the gorgeous uh, Yorkdale. Why is that important to you, to have your own stores? I think everybody has their own perception of the brand based on what stores buy from us as opposed to seeing what the whole collection is about. So it was very important for us for people to understand the whole environment that it should be in and the breadth of the product also. I mean, we have, we're not, some people think we're a leather brand, some people think we're a wool brand, others think we're a down brand, but we really transition you from any weather and we have amazing accessories and it really gives you a chance to see full circle what we do and not only what we do, but in what environment it should be presented as well. Mm -hmm. What What is your, uh, the biggest dream? I mean, it, it, I don't know how far it goes or if it just keeps evolving uh, as you go, but. But is there you know, a vision where you want to have shops perhaps one day in cities all over the world? Uh, how, how big do you uh, aspire to get with your brand? Well, uh, we actually, we already have a few stores in Korea also, in Seoul. So it's, uh, some of them are standalone stores and some of them are like pop-ups during the winter. Um, our goal is really to be in every big city, so New York, Milan, uh, Paris, London, and we're planning on opening uh, a lot of stores to come, so about, I would say about this year that's going to come, 2017, we're planning to open about four to five other stores. Oh, wow. So our goals are big, and we never, one of the things is, is we always thought we're not going to work as hard, but one of the biggest things of success is you gotta work hard, and it, it takes it takes a lot of dedication, patience, and a lot of hours, and failing in many times, and just making sure that you get back up, yeah. because you learn the best way to learn is learning from your mistakes, and and making sure that you get up the next day and be like, okay, it's okay, we we're gonna do it better the next round. Yeah. So uh, our goals are, is they're very big. And, uh... and our dream is to become a brand that's timeless, that, uh, you know, your daughter can't wait to, to grab it from your closet type of item, an item that, uh, that gives you confidence and that has a heritage. I mean, we really hope that one day we're in our graves and people are still appreciating the brand. That's really our, our biggest dream. You also have managed to, um, to get some incredible celebrity ambassadors on board. All kinds of uh, stars have worn uh, your things, appreciate their, their sense of cool, and, uh, and I know just absolutely love the brand. How important uh, is that for you as a brand, as marketers, to, uh, to get your stuff on celebrities' backs? Well, I think the most important thing is that it's super flattering because they have a choice to wear anything they want and they choose to wear macage. So I think that that's amazing. Uh, it's amazing for any brand, but it, it's amazing for, for, I mean, whether it's a celebrity or a person, everybody counts. I don't think it's just about celebrity. Of course, it becomes, it's at the eye of the public, but I think one of our biggest strengths is that our, our clients are loyal because they love their product and they get something amazing. And I think that's the most important thing, even more so than celebrities. Celebrities just bring it to a bigger stage, but everybody that wears the brand matters. You managed, absolutely, good for you, this man saying. Fashion for the people. Um, finally, one thing that I think uh, most designers um, anywhere in the world have the hardest time managing because they're truly creative, artistic spirits is wearing the business hat. Yet, I, I don't know if there's one of you who's maybe more business, one of you who's, who's more artsy, or, or do you share those responsibilities? I think we have uh, qualities that uh, really combine well, uh, strengths and weaknesses that combine. We have a little bit of both in different areas. I think that, uh, you know, we're like salt and pepper. I don't know, you can't make a dressing without both. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you've uh, added a delightful amount of spice to the Canadian fashion scene, and we're just so proud of what you're doing on an international scale. Thank you so much for being here, Erin and Elisa. Makaj. Hey, thank you.